So this time, what they want you to do is put it in summation notation. So the first thing I need to do is write that. And then what I'm going to do is I can decide, do I want it to be an N? Do I want it to be an X? Whatever I want it to be is what I can have it be. So I'll have it be N this time, and I'll start with the first term. And I'm going to assume that this is the first, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. And that means I want to know the first term all the way to the fifth term. You're not adding them up. I didn't say find the sum. I'm saying put it in this notation. Okay. Now what I have to do is go, hmm, well, what kind of rule is it? When I look at it, I go, oh, I know this. The pattern is plus 3 plus 3, which means it's arithmetic. And if it's arithmetic, I'm going to go back. I can either do a sub n equals a1 n minus 1 times d, or I would prefer to go to my linear place, which is y equals mx plus b, which means I do the pattern plus the zero term. So if this is plus 3, this is minus 3. Now the problem is, if I put 3x plus 5 here, which is the equation, it's wrong. Am I talking about an n or am I talking about an x? Well, I committed to an n, so I have to commit to an n here. Or if that's an x, I have to commit to an x there. And what should happen is if I plug in 1 and I get the answer, so 8, and I plug in 2, 11, 14, 17, 20, which are those numbers there, and I add them up, I should get what I would get there. Okay. So I have written this in summation notation. All right, let's do the next one. Summation notation. The hardest part for some of us is making the sigma. What do we want to do this time? Do we want it to be x? Okay, x equals 1. This is the first term. And it says dot, dot, dot. So what does that mean? That means it is all the way to infinity. Now I have to figure out the type of sequence it is. So it's really negative 6, comma, negative 4, comma, negative 2, comma, 0, comma, 2. Sometimes that's easier for us to see that the pattern is plus 2, plus 2. Well, if it's a plus 2 plus 2 pattern, that means it is arithmetic. If it's arithmetic, I will do it this way this time, just so you can see two ways. The first term times the pattern. And then that's 2n minus 8. Now, I committed to x this time, so I need to commit to x here. Two different ways to do the exact type of problem. This is a series. This is an infinite series. This is a finite series. Okay. Summation notation. We're not finding the sum. We're just writing it as that way. So in a sense, comma, 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 comma. So I see that the ratio is times 2 times 2. Boom, it's geometric. A sub n equals a1, r to the n minus 1, or a sub 0, r to the n. Whatever one you would prefer, that's fine with me. This time I think I'll use this one, and then maybe the next time I'll use the next one. I don't know. I don't have a um, pick one way or the other. So I look here. Oh, do you want it to be n or x? Let's do n. It's dot, dot, dotting. That means it gets going forever. I'm going to use this one. So I'm going to go 1 half the ratio to the n minus 1. If I wanted to do a sub 0, instead of multiplying by 2, I would divide by 2. Dividing by 2 is multiplying by 1 half. The 0 term would be negative 1 fourth. So I could have created it as this, n equals 1 infinity negative 1 fourth times 2 to the n. Either one is acceptable. It's whatever one you want. Know how to do both because sometimes you're going to see one type. Sometimes you're going to see the other. If you see it written like this, this is the zero term. If you see it written like this, this is the first term. Okay. So let's look here. If I do this one and I go times um, three halves, oh, I knew that because that's the only way to get one. So let's see, one times three halves. Ah, let's see, times three times two. That works. That means the ratio is... Oops, times 3 halves. Do my little sigma. Okay. And I'll do x this time. x equals 1, 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the sum of the first six numbers. I'll do this formula because it seems easier for me. The first number times the ratio to the n minus 1. Okay? Hopefully with enough practice, this will be easier. All right? Now, they want us to actually find the sum and decide if it even exists, if it converges or diverges. So what I need to do is be able to look and go, hey, is it arithmetic, geometric, or neither? Well, it's arithmetic. So if it's arithmetic, I know it exists. I'm going to do it a different way. So remember before here, I would list. I would go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I don't want you to do it that way this time. I want you to use that sum formula. Um, A1, uh, oops, which is n. A1 plus AN over 2. So you can see how you can use this formula instead of listing out all the numbers and figuring it out. So I want the sum of the first six numbers. Now how am I going to get the first term? How am I going to get the first term? I'm going to plug in 1. 2 minus 5 times 1, which is negative 3. Plus A sub N, which means I want the sixth number. So I plug in 6. Okay. Hope that calculated that right. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Negative 31. Negative 93 is the sum of the first six numbers. Now what I want you to see is the difference between this problem and this problem where we listed it out which seems annoying, versus this problem where we use the formula. What made this one difficult was having to find that, uh, let's see, 15th number. But they gave us the first number. But if you look here in this problem, they didn't give us any of the numbers, but they did give us the formula. That's how it's a little bit different. All right, let's do this one. I look at this. Is this arithmetic or geometric? It's geometric. Well, remember when it's geometric, there's either finite, it ends, or infinite, um, it goes on forever. They want the sum of the first six numbers, so I use this formula. And I plug it in. Now, how do I figure out the a sub 1? Well, I know the a sub 1 is there because it's to the n minus 1. So that means I'm going to go 5 times 1 minus what's, oopsies, just kidding. What's the ratio? to the sixth power over 1 minus 5. Minus 5 is negative 4, negative 2. I'm going to plug it into my calculator. And then divide it by negative 2. Oops, divide this. Sorry about that. There's probably a faster way I could have gotten this, but I messed up, so negative 2. 7, 8, 1, 12. So the sum of the first six numbers is 7, 8, 1, 2. I could have done this differently. I could have gone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and listed them all out, but I didn't want to. I could have done what I did here, which is the geometric one, but and they gave me the first term and they gave me the ratio, so they gave me all the same things they gave. And I could have gone that way. All right, let's look at this one. This one is saying, hey, it's the same thing, but this time it's infinite. So it's still geometric, but this time they want to know the sum of the um, infinite numbers. But if the ratio is 5, that means the numbers are getting bigger and bigger. How do you find the sum of things that are getting bigger and bigger and bigger? You can't quantify that. So because the ratio is greater than 1, there is no sum. If it's finite, I can end it. I can say the sum of these group of numbers. But if you're saying keep going, keep going, keep going, and they get bigger and bigger and bigger, I don't know how to quantify that. All right. Um, I apparently cut and pasted incorrectly, so we're just going to cross that one off. Now, the last thing I need to do is decide if it converges or diverges. Converges means that I can do it. I can find the sum. Yay. So this one, so we'll, I'll circle this. It converges. I can do it. This one converges. I can do it. But this one, I cannot do it. 
it diverges. There is no sum. Okay. All right, let's go over the homework here because we have time in this video. So find the sum. And then they're saying multiples. What does a multiple of 11 mean? It means you take 11 times 1, and 11 times 2, and 11 times 3, dot, dot, dot. Find the value of x. You're going to do the law of sines or the law of cosines. You can always use CPM to help you. Um, this is increasing at 4%. Let me remind you, if you increase something exponentially at a rate, let's say, of 6%, it's really 106% which is 1.06, that is your ratio. If it decreases by 6%, that means you're not at 100% anymore, you're at 94%, that means your ratio would be 0.94. So now it can help you with that one. Okay. Doesn't mean it's easy, but it might make it easier. All right, you've seen this, you've seen it, you've seen it, you've seen it, you've seen it, and this one you know you can do your sine, cosine, or tan.